Hi everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got a great presentation. Today we're going to teach you all about enterococcus. Again, the time, nine minutes, a precise, concise, everything is going to be done around nine minutes. And please keep watching it. Repeat, repetition is the key, okay? So we have concised all the facts into this nine minute presentation. Again, my name is Pramil Charat. I'm a program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency. I teach medical students and medical residents also director of research. So let's look at it. When you talk about uh, enterococci, it's a gram-positive cocci in chairs and or short chains, known sporing, and the facultative anaerobes, fermented glucose to form lactic acid. It's common cells in GI, GU, and oral cavity. Remember that. It's a common cell GI, gastrointestinal, gastro, I mean genital urinary and oral cavity, and it can cause nosocomial infection. At least 12 different species are disease causing. Enterococcus fecalis, 95%. Enterococcus fecium, 4% of the rust can grow in extremes of temperature 10 to 45 degrees centigrade minus 10 actually to 45 degree pH 4.5 to 9.9 up to 6 percent of NaCl and 40 percent bile can grow that's why it's in the GI system it's catalyzed negative so some brief facts about um, and the epidemiology if we look, if we look at is the second most common cause of all nosocomial infection, that is enterococci, okay? It is the enterococcus bacteremia, because patients with underlying um, immune, Im underlying immunity problems or illness, immunocompromised people, mortality 11 to 20 percent. We just published a study looking at the in national inpatient sample. We found that around like 11 to 12 percent at that time. Endocarditis, 26 percent, okay? So it's very important um, uh, roll out endocarditis in this patient. 30% of all cause of bacterial endocarditis is caused by enterococci. So if you look at the pathophysiology on how does the I mean, virulence factor, you got surface polysaccharide, which prevents the phagocytosis, aggregation factor, adhesion factors that causes adhesion to the host cells, and fissure invading the resistance to non-specific defensive mechanism. Then you got cytolysin, hemolysin, gelatinase, uh, serine proteinase, lipo, Ticoic acid can cause, uh, I mean, local cell and tissue injury. There's high level of inherent and acquired resistance to most antibiotics. There's a biofilm formation and then adheres to the, so it, it, because of the biofilm formation can adhere to catheters, central lines and dental processes and heart valves. We already talked about the increased um, endocarditis. And so it also limits antibiotic penetration and can cause persistent infection, the genital tract, intra-abdominal, biliary sources, central line. Those are the common sources of the bacterial infection. So clinical infection, we talk about mainly G, I mean, you know, GU, genital urinary, like UTI, it can cause bacteremia, it can affect uh, GI system, bacterial endocarditis, diverticulitis, meningitis, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis um, in the patient with hepatic cirrhosis, and can cause like sepsis. So when you talk about the, let's talk about the enterococci and the drug resistance, okay? There is two types. What is the intrinsic resistance and then the acquired resistance? When you talk about the intrinsic resistance, there's cephalosporin, semi-synthetic penicillin, and low level of aminoglycoside, and low levels of clindamycin, okay? When you talk about acquired resistance, then we have you know, the penicillin, ambicillin, high dose of aminoglycoside, fluoroquinolone, chloramphenicol, erythromycin, tetracycline, and vancomycin. And some resistant to newer agents like the lancelid, um, quinupristine, dalforpristine, daptomycin, and tigecycline, okay? If it transfers antibiotic resistant to other patho pathogenic bacteria by gene transfer and plasmid and um, transposome. So that is also making it kind of very deadly. So when you, the next thing is we need to know about the vancomycin resistant enterococci. Big, big public health concern, right? Anytime you got like vancomycin resistant, you have to be very, very careful. So most studies, 6 to 18% and 10% mortality rate in those people and 54,000 um, infection in the hospitalized patient and uh, around in 2017 estimate like around 5,400 people died in the United States. What are the risk factors of vancomycin resistant enterococci? Previous treatment with the vancomycin and other antibiotics. Prolonged hospital stay. The immune system is compromised. Abdominal chest surgery. We talk about the GI system. Catheter lines and devices. We already talked about the GU, genital urinary system. Okay, these are the main risk factors. So laboratory diagnosis, you identify 
It's a catalyzed negative, ferment lactose, hydrolyzed um, acetylene, reduces litmus milk culture. You do that, drug sensitivity with the minimum inhibitory concentration, molecular characterization, the sensitivity and specificity of the culture is pretty good, 97 to 100%. Okay? So the treatment is the first thing you remove the infected lines, uh, catheter, prosthesis, devices. In un uncomplicated UTI, UTI, you can see nitrofurantoin, but VRE UTI, you have to give daptomycin and fosfomycin. Okay? So, prosthetic valve, where you can give ampicillin, vancomycin plus aminoglycoside for six weeks. If it is native valve endocarditis, ampicillin, vancomycin, aminoglycoside four weeks, and six weeks if symptoms is greater than um, three months. So, in meningitis, IV linoxolid or IV plus intravertical or intrathecal quinopristine and dalfopristine is there. Resistant to ampicillin, you give vancomycin. In the VRE treatment, you give linoxolid, daptomycin, tigicycline, quinopristine, and dalfopristine. So VRE treatment is vancomycin resistant, try linoxolid, daptomycin, tigicycline, quinopristine, and dalfopristine. Okay? Prevention and rushing as safety precaution is very important. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon. Thank you.